Hey, shalom, shalom to all my fellow brothers and sisters out there. It's me again, Damian Powell from YeshuaSavesAll.com. Peace be to you in the name of our Father, Yahweh, and our Adon, which means Master in Hebrew, the Son of Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach. So today, I want to go over something a little different today. I want to talk about messages contained in Hebrew names. So I figured it would tie in perfectly from the message last week about why do many hate the Hebraic roots of our faith? Because we discussed the importance of the Hebraic roots of our faith and how the scriptures were written in Hebrew um, with a Eastern mindset and not a Western mindset and how the words translated into um, into Hebrew into another language um, don't have the same force in them, which is really, really important to understand um, is that because it begins to lose its meaning and how the Hebrew is the holy tongue of creation. Okay, the world was spoken into existence with Hebrew as we read from Jubilees 12 and also the importance of studying the etymology of the words in the original language. Now, one of the greatest examples that I gave last week and that I always like to use is Yeshua literally means Yahweh is salvation. Hallelujah. So today I want to look at names from the Hebrew and formulate a message out of them. Now, in order to make this work, it requires adding a word or two to make a smooth transition to the next word. But there are three examples that I would like to use or three messages that I like to uh, to give concerning this. And I'll start off with a, a short one so that you'll get a point of the message. So the first message is, is this. The word Pharisee in Hebrew means separate. And Sadducees in Hebrew means righteous ones. So adding these two words together or two names in a sentence, we get the Pharisees and the Sadducees attempt to separate the righteous ones with their man-made doctrine. Now, that's this makes complete sense when you look at what Yeshua says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 6, where he says, Yeshua said to them, Mind and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Verse 11 through 12. How is it that you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread, but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Then they understood that he did not say beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees and the Sadducees attempt to separate the righteous ones with their man-made doctrine, the oral Torah, the Talmud. So now let's look at message number two. So let's start off with a shorter one, and now we'll go into a little more um, of a detailed one. Now we're going to look at the sons of Yaakov, Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, in the order of their birth. And we will get a message out of this. Genesis chapter 35, verse 22 through 25 says, And it came to be when Yisrael dwelt in the land that Reuven, Reuben, went and lay with Bilhah, his dad's concubine. And Yisrael heard about it. Now the sons of Yaakov were twelve. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun. The sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. The sons of Bilhah, Rachel, uh, Rachel's female servant were Don and Naphtali. And the sons of Zilpah, Leah's female servant were G.A.D., which is pronounced God in Hebrew, and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padan Aram. All right, so now let's look at the meaning of their names according to their birth, and we'll get a message. Reuben means behold or a son. Simeon means heard. Levi means joined. Judah means Yahweh be praised. Yisachar means brought 
reward. Zebulun means dwelling or habitation. Joseph means Yahweh has added. Benjamin means son of the right hand. Dan means, or Don means, he that judges. Naphtali means my struggle. God means fortune. Asher means gladness or Asher. So let's combine them together and see what it says in the sentence. Behold, I heard the truth, then join. Let Yahweh be praised. He brought a reward. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. From the beginning has added the son of the right hand, Yeshua. He that judges, John 5, 22, forgives my struggle, died for our sins, bringing fortune and gladness, eternal life. Hallelujah. Behold, I heard the truth, then join. Let Yahweh be praised. He brought a reward. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. From the beginning has added the son of the right hand, Yeshua. He that judges forgives my struggle, bringing fortune and gladness. Hallelujah. Eternal life. So I just want to give some scriptures to go along with everything that is read from um, that message. It is Mark 4.20. And those who sown on good soil are those who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit. Some 30, some 60 and some 100. So that would go to that part right there. Behold, I heard the truth, then join. Uh, Psalms chapter 150, verse 6. All Let all that have breath praise Yah. Hallelujah. That goes to let Yahweh be praised. John 14, 17. The spirit of the truth, whom the world is unable to receive because it does not see him or know him, but you know him, for he stays with you and shall be in you. So that is the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, was the part where it says the Holy Spirit is dwelling within us. Matthew 26, 64 says, uh, Yeshua said to him, you have said it. Besides, I say to you, from now, from now you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Almighty and coming on the clouds of the heavens. So, that is um, from the beginning um, has added the son of the right hand, which we know is Yeshua. Uh, John 5, 22, for the father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the son. And uh, that's the part he that judges. Then we go to Hebrews chapter four, verse 14 through 16. Therefore, since we have a great Kohen Haggadol, a high priest, who has passed through the Shamayim, the heavens, Yeshua, the son of Yahweh. Let us hold fast our confessions, for we do not have a Kohen Haggadol, a high priest unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who was tried in all respects as we are apart from sin. Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of favor in order to receive compassion and find favor for timely help. Hallelujah. So that is forgives my struggle, dies for our sins. So he's our intercessor. He died for our sins and he can now intercede for us so he can forgive us of our struggles because he was there. He's been there on, on earth when he became flesh. Revelation chapter 21, verse three through six. And I heard a loud voice from the Shamaim, the heaven saying, see, the booth of Elohim is with men. And he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And Elohim himself shall be with them, and be with and be their Elohim. And Elohim shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no more mourning, no mourning, nor crying, and there shall be no more pain. For the former hath passed away, and he who is sitting on the throne said, See, I make all new. And he said to me, Write. For these words, right, for these words are true and trustworthy. And he said to me, it is done. I am the olive and the tile, the beginning and the end. To the one who thirsts, I shall give of the fountain of the water of life without payment. So that right there goes to uh, bringing fortune and gladness, the eternal life, where there'll be no more death, no more pain, and we'll be dwelling with him forever. 
Hallelujah. Now let's go to message three. We're going to look at the sons of David, of King David, right? And we're going to do it again according to the order of their birth. At first, we're going to look at the first uh, six sons that were born to him when he reigned in Hebron for seven years and six months. It's found in 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 2 through 5. 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 2 through 5. It says, The sons born to David, Dawid, and Hebron. And the firstborn was Amnon by Ohiniam, the Yisraelitess. And his second was Kelav by Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. And the third, Absalom, son of Maacah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. The fourth was Adonai, Adoniah, son of Haggith. And the fifth was Shef, Sheftiah, son of Abital. And the sixth was Yithriam by David's wife Egla. These were born to David in Hebron. Now, David had 11 more sons born to him when he reigned in Jerusalem for 33 years. So you see 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 13 through 15. 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 13 through 15. And David took more concubines and wives from Jerusalem after he had come from Hebron and more sons and daughters were born to David. And these were the names of those born to him in Jerusalem: Shamua, and Shoav, Shovav, Nathan, Solomon, Yip, Yippar, Elishua, Nepheg, Yaphia, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphelet. So now let's look at all the names of the first six sons that were born to him and then the last 11 that were born to him in that order and see what it says. Amnon means trustworthy. Kelav means like father. Absalom means my father of peace. Adonijah means my father is Yahweh. Sep Sephatiah means judged of Yahweh. Yithraim means excellence of the people. Shamua means renowned. Shobab means rebellious. Nathan means given or giving. Solomon means peacefully. Yifbar means chosen. Elishua means my ale is salvation. Nepheg means sprout. Yafia means shining. Elishama means my ale hears. Elyada means ale knows. Eliphalet, my ale of deliverance. So let's combine all these together. And this is what it says. Trustworthy like father, my father of peace. My master is Yahweh, judged of Yahweh. And he is the excellence of the people. Yahweh is renowned, but Yisrael is rebellious. Yet he keeps giving peacefully. Yeshua is, Yeshua is chosen. My ale is salvation and shall sprout with shining. My ale hears. He knows he is my ale of deliverance. Hallelujah. So was Yaakov, Jacob, and Dawid, David, giving us a message when they named their sons? It is interesting to examine either way. Okay, uh, with adding a few words to the, uh, the names, we can see that there are some powerful messages contained within the etymology of their names. So, like I say, either way it goes, I just think it's really interesting that when, they are, when they're all combined together, that it, it flows smoothly with just a few extra words added in to make it flow. And it, 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 it goes right along with what we know from Scripture. I think it's truly beautiful. And I think it's something that um, could actually be looked into a little more. So, I pray that this encourages everyone to continue to dig deeper into the Hebraic roots of our faith which is why I said that message last week, and to keep clinging to Yeshua HaMashiach as always. So as, as always, may I felt Father Yahweh brought bless you in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. And Toda Rabbah, thank you very much for joining in, and Shalom.